Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you could, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well so you get a notification next time I put up a video. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And again on Thursdays, I have a live premiere video that you can join and chat with me while you watch a recorded video at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I thought we would do some what I call mop-up pages, stenciled pages to put into a junk journal. So this will be like the starting point, if you will. So I've got several stencils here, and I've got the Christmas Dream Tattered Angels set, as well as the red that comes in the Christmas Dream subscription box. So let me get some paper, and let's do some stenciling. So I've got a box that I like to use when I'm spraying, mainly so that the spray doesn't go everywhere all over my desk and I don't have to mop it up. It just contains it into the box. You don't have to use a box. It's just handy. My box just so happens to be big enough to hold an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. The first stencil that I have in here is from the November Artistic Stencil Club for 2020. You can go in and purchase prior month. So if you come in and you're not really feeling that month stencil club, when you place your order, say, hey, I would like X month in place of the current month. And that's what you'll get the first month. And then next month, you'll get whatever's the current month. So to start with, I thought I would use the red. So I'm going to grab the red that comes from the Christmas Dream subscription box. It's a beautiful shade of red with lots of gold mica in it. So you want to make sure that you shake it up really well because that mica settles in the bottom or on the side if you leave yours laying on the side. You know, and a lot of people ask me how to store them. I store them different ways. You probably can't see it very well but I have a shelf back in this corner and I just put mine upright. So put them wherever you can, however you can. All right, so I've shook this up really well and I'm going to come in here and pump this and spray all over my stencil. Now you can be heavier in some areas and lighter in others. What I like about spraying on top of a stencil is because the stencil resists, I can take another sheet of paper, come in here, and then mop up on the, uh, this other side of the stencil, and I basically get two for one. I'm just using standard copy paper. I think this one is a, a 20 pound from Hewlett Packard. It's just what I use when it's on sale. I will go ahead and spray the backside as well a few times. That way there's a little bit of color when I come to this page. I may stencil some more later on, but this way I have something started. It's not a blank page. So here's what it looks like mopping up. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the red. I'll set these aside to dry, and then at the end we'll take one or two and decorate them further. So that was one of the stencils from the November Stencil Club. Set that aside. Here's what it looks like when you spray through the stencil. This one is the Snowflake Stencil that is also in the November Stencil Club. And this time I'm going to grab the blue from the Christmas Dream Tattered Angel set that's called Toy Soldier. Uh, I had Robin help me out with naming the colors that we were putting with the kit. And I thought this blue would be pretty like a toy soldier. You could also use it for snowflakes. So that's what we're going to do. Again, I'm shaking this up really well making sure that that mica is stirred up in there. If you don't shake it up well and you start pumping, that mica will clog your sprayer. I'm just grabbing another sheet of paper to lay on top. And I like pressing the paper to the stencil so that really gets all that color. And again, I'll spray the backside. So there is mopping up the snowflakes. And that's what it looks like when you spray through the snowflakes. Isn't it gorgeous? And I forgot to do this on the red one, so I'll do it in a moment, but I'm gonna spray the back side of this with the same blue. This is the third stencil sheet that comes in the November Stencil Club. And this time I'm gonna grab Christmas tree. It's a very dark green with a lot of gold in it. Oh, I just saw something. The stencil has a hanging chad. Since I know it's a really dark green, I'm being very light-handed when I'm adding the color. Again, I'll spray the backside. 
Ooh, that turned out pretty. That's Christmas tree. And that's what it looks like spraying through the stencil. And again, I'll spray the backside. This time I have the stencil that comes in the Christmas Dream subscription box. You get two of them. This is one of those. It's split. It's got two different designs. And I think this time I want to use, I'm going to use the other red. This is called Christmas Berry. So there is the one with Christmas Berry in the stencil from the subscription box. I like it. It kind of reminds me of a sweater, a Christmas sweater. This time I have a green sheet of paper from the subscription box and I'm going to use the one that looks like Christmas tree snowflakes and I'll use the holly leaf green from the Christmas dream set. I'm going to pick up the green again. So there's mopping up the stencil. So it got a nice little pattern there. And there it is sprayed through the stencil. I like it. I think it's really pretty. It gets that tone on tone. I'm gonna set these aside because I think I wanna spray the backside with a different stencil. So I'm gonna take the one that I mopped up and flip it over and put that down. It's a little bit thicker paper. So now I have the holly leaves and holly berries. I, I think it's just holly leaves. I'm gonna use the same green and mop up with the other page so you kind of get that other pattern on the other side that's what it looks like spraying through the stencil i didn't get real dark but i think that's fine i think it kind of gives it a neat texture all right so i've got a couple colors left i'm going to put in a red this time and this one is called a quilted starburst and i thought it would just be really pretty on this red and we're going to use the golden ornament so it's got a lot of gold mica in this one so shake it up, pick up the red, and it's real subtle, but can you see the pattern in there? It'll look really good when it's dry. This will have a beautiful gold shimmer to it. And that's what it looks like with the stencil sprayed through. I like it. I think it's really pretty. All right, so I'm going to dry this because I want to use a different color on the backside. You can see the stenciled pattern is a lot drier. Now this one, it changed. I don't know why, but I kind of like the way it looked because it kind of has this old vintage crackle look. We'll flip it over and let's grab, this is from the September Stencil Club. And I just like this pattern and I thought it might look good if we do it in tinsel, it's a silver color. And then we'll just put it on the back side. So there's what the silver, you see the patterns in there? Set this aside to dry. And then there it is on the red with the silver. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry. We're gonna clean up my station here and then I'm gonna pick a couple of pages and we'll decorate them. I have selected a couple of the sheets. So this is from the, the November Stencil Club where I sprayed the Christmas tree through the stencil. And then this is from the September Stencil Club where I mopped up the tinsel Tattered Angels. And then that side has the, what is it? The um, Quilted Starburst Stencil. All right, so I've decided I'm going to do a couple of little things here. First, I want to make this into a little faux folded envelope. So I'm finding where the center mark is, and then I'll take the sides, make them as even as possible, and fold that down. This is a great way to take a sheet of paper, this is 8.5 by 11, and turn it into your own little envelope. So I've got the grids. I'm just going to use those corners. Come down about an inch. Take this piece. I'll fold it up. Oh, about that far. You, you can go as much as you want. That's three and a quarter. I'll just do three and a quarter or about. Okay. And then I'll take the top and fold that down. And now we have a little envelope. You see that? So now what I'll do is I'll take my distress inks and go around the edges. I'll even open it up and do the inside area. Okay, so now I've got that added on here. I want to put some faux postage on here. So I've got a little pile of things that I want to use. 
and I have one of Norella's, I think it's Santa ephemera, something like that. And this is one of the domino size. So it's about an inch, what is it? An inch by two inches or almost two and a quarter. So I just made a white piece or red piece of cardstock, just a little bit larger. And I'm going to glue these together. I'm just using Aline's tacky glue. So I've gone ahead and glue those together. And then I have these little pinking uh, scissors from Fiskars. They're paper scissors. You know, I've seen a few people post recently that they've seen these at the dollar type stores. You can still order them online. And what I'm going to do is just kind of line it up along the edge and then pink the edge. I want a little bit of that red border, so I'm not coming in too far. And then I'll put some distress ink on here to kind of grunge it up just a little bit like this. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I want to glue this onto my envelope as if it was um, a postage stamp. And then I have from the Postal Cube, it looks like a cancellation. So I'm going to stamp this kind of over my Santa just a little bit. And then I cannot remember the name of this, so I'll have it in the description box because I'll remember what it is. But there's a set, and you get several, and I think it may be cancellation. I'm not pos positive. But I like that it had this little crown, so I want to stamp it so you kind of see that little crown on there. Kind of neat, huh? Then I have the Postmark Collage, and I want to use this because it has an address right here. So I took it off the block so that I could line it up with the ink pad and only ink up where the address is on here. And to make it easier, I'm going to flip this over because I want to put that address right in here. And this is right side up. So just kind of come over here and just barely kiss it. And then it looks like it's kind of faded, but it's been put down. You've got an address. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, so on this side, I need to figure out a way to fasten this close. And what I did was I cut a piece of cardstock because I had this scrap left over. This is about four inches long. And I think this is like a three quarters of an inch by three and a half inches. And then I have the Merry Christmas from, I think it's the Holiday Quartet. There's four different sayings. And I have Merry Christmas here. I'm going to stamp it in the middle of this piece of craft cardstock. Again, it was just a scrap that was laying on my desk. So I've stamped that on there. It's not straight. I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the red. So it kind of gives it that true handmade look because it's crooked. Okay. So... Now I have that in the center, okay? I want to put that right down here so that this envelope can be tucked into place. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right across here and then set it down. And if I need to, I will uh, put like a block on it to kind of help let that set just a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to move on because that is what I did with one of those mop-up papers. And now what I want to do is decorate this as if as a journal page so I can put it in the journal that I'm working on. I was supposed to go live on Monday, October the 26th, but we had internet outage and then we had power glitches. So I spent the day getting everything prepped and decided that I would do a recording of a couple of the videos. Well, this is one of the pages that I decided to add to the mop-up papers. All right, so I've got this page here, and it is where I mopped up the stencil from the September Stencil Club. And I'm going to fold this in half so that this now becomes my journal page, okay? And I want to use the Postal collage and I want to clean it off because it had black ink on it because I want to do some embossing. All right, so I'm going to take this guy and use my Versamark ink pad and ink it up. I need a little scrap of paper. Get one of these, put it right here. 
and put a different block on that one. So I'm going to make sure it's right side up and we're going to stamp it on the right side of the page. I'm going to slide my paper over and re-ink and we're going to stamp on the left side. Set that aside if I need it later. We'll have it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is grab my gold glitter embossing powder. I know I have been using this a lot lately, and the reason being is because I really want to use what I have and get rid of the excess, if you will, of things that I have. And it just seems to fit when I want to use this gold glitter embossing powder. It's messy as I'll get out, but <laughs> the end result is really quite cool. All right, so I'm just sprinkling the embossing powder over that. Close the lid, set it aside, and I will use my heat tool and we will heat up this embossing powder. So uh, make sure that you don't breathe in the embossing powder. If you're going to be doing a lot of embossing, you might wear a mask and have good ventilation while you do it. Don't have your face right over it. You're going to hover your heat tool and then you'll start to notice that it changes. So like you could probably see where it's starting to be, become a little more shiny in that upper corner and it'll just continue to change until the whole thing is complete. So I'm going to work this whole, uh, whole corner and uh, we'll do the other side. Okay. So that is embossed. Now, if you want to get rid of the glitter now because it bothers you, you know, you can grab, this is the, uh, little cloth from perfect cleaning cloth and you can just rub that across and it'll pick up any of that loose glitter that's just sitting on here i got i got most of it off it looks pretty good all right so now i want to decorate on top of here and what i've got are a couple of things so i've got a piece of fabric i am a member of a quilt guild although we haven't met for almost a year I, so I haven't paid my dues. I need to do that. <laughs> and sometimes they have little sales where they have ladies that are done with a project. And so they bundled up and put a little Ziploc bag. And so it's all Christmas fabric scraps. And this is what I had was a little Ziploc bag of Christmas scraps. So I thought that would be really pretty to place on here. And it gives us a little bit of an eclectic feel in our junk journals. You know, we want to make pretty things you may not have. A whole lot of junk per se but you do have rubber stamps you've got some pieces of fabric well if you mix it up just a little bit it kind of gives you that junky feel all right so I'm just putting a little bit of glue down ah come on now I got it it's got getting away from me I'm gonna smooth that out I'm going to lay a block over it just to help lay it down. And then I've got this cardinal piece. This is a chipboard for the Christmas Dream subscription box. This is one of the elements that you get in the kit. And so what I'm going to do is lay that down on a piece of paper here. I'm going to grab my Versamark ink pad and we're going to ink up this little cardinal on a branch. And I'm just, again, pressing it into the cardboard so it'll pick up the ink. And now I have some silver embossing powder. So I'm going to dip my little image inside the embossing powder. And you see that it's now coated. Close the embossing powder and then let's heat it up. Okay, so since this is not a piece that I can really hold like the journal page, I'm putting it on a little cookie sheet because my mat is plastic and I don't want to warp it by putting the heat on here. You could also use a glass pan. You could use a piece of cardboard that you cover with aluminum foil to uh, help with the heat and get your item to emboss a little faster. All right, so I'm just embossing this and then we'll come right back. All right, so the embossing is done. It's cool. And now what I want to do is lay this on here in this corner. So I'm going to take my glue and glue this down. Just put a fine amount of glue on here. And then I'll just lay my little block on there for just a moment. All right, so let me prepare the other side. Okay, so I've got a pocket that's part of the kit 
for a Christmas dream here. I've gone ahead and added some strips of book page because I wanted the full width and depth of this pocket. I've also gone over this. I didn't mention this earlier because I didn't, well, I guess I didn't have any on the, on the Santa. I went across this with some tulip dimensional glitter paint. It's fabric paint that is like $4.99 for a four ounce bottle. And you can use a coupon if you go to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and I like it because it's clear and I can use it on any project and add just a little bit of shimmer. And it really reminds me of those old vintage greeting cards that you would get that would have just a touch of glitter on them. And that's why I like using it. So I've added these tabs. So all I'm going to do is fold this tab back into the inside. And then we're going to glue this in the corner over here. I didn't get my little tabs folded perfectly, so I'm just adding a little bit of Distress Inks right there on the edge. I think I'm going to put this journal card in here, but I want a little bit more right here, and I happen to have another scrap of fabric. So I'm going to glue that down, and then let's make a little element to go on top. I have a little ornament stamp, and we're going to grab the Versamark ink again. And I'm going to stamp this in the corner and let's dip it into the gold embossing powder. All right, so let's dip it in there. All right, let's use the heat tool and emboss it. I'm doing a lot of embossing today on this little page. I hope it kind of gives you another idea of mixing it up when you're working with all of your stuff, especially if you already have embossing powder. All right, so I've embossed that. So now what I'm going to do is fussy cut it out. Just kind of give a little bit of a border around it. And this was just a piece of cardstock that I had. I had some pre-cut cards, and I just thought I would use one. So that's what it looks like now that it's cut. And I'm going to use my walnut stain and go around the edge. And I'll kind of wipe across it a little bit with the walnut stain, and then it won't be so stark white. And I think it would be really cute with that green as the backdrop. So I'll put this on top. And then this is going to go in the pocket here. All right, so we need to decorate this side. And here's what I've got. I've got another piece of this fabric in the definition for mistletoe. I think that should go right in the middle. And then I have a piece of cardstock and a trimming of one of the gel prints that I did a couple of weeks ago on a Thursday mixed media day. And then this is a little element that comes in a Christmas Dream, subs Dream subscription box. It's a little chipboard element. And I thought it would be really pretty if we made a pocket right here on the bottom of our page. So let's glue this down by using this little scrap several times I've got a nice little thing going here all right so the red piece of cardstock has had distress inks are put around the edges but I noticed that the gel print has not so I'm just applying some distress inks really fast I'll glue these two together I'll go ahead and glue this down as a pocket even though I haven't put the embellishment on there this way the pocket can be drying while we finish this embellishment and then I can put the journal card into the pocket or the, or the envelope in the pocket and then uh, be done. All right, so I'll set this over here for a moment. All right, I'm grabbing my scrap of paper and I've got the little bow with the holly leaves. I'm going to do the same technique what I did with the little bird and that is mush the ink pad all the way across. And this time I have a red, I want to call it a custom color. <laughs> I think I had some leftover red from a project and I ended up using it for whatever reason. And then a friend gave me this really funky red and I was like, well, I don't have very much of that. So I ended up mixing several together. So there's a couple of shades of red in here. There's some gold. There's some glitter. <laughs> there's a variety. All right, so let's heat emboss this. I love how this one changes. Now, it may be hard for y'all to see it because of the pan. But once I get this uh, finished, you'll kind of see it. 
it's hot so don't touch it right away okay so let me see if y'all can see can you see the gold and the glitter and how deep red that turned out to be part of that is because the chipboard is brown and so that red just became a little bit deeper and we're going to take this and we're going to glue it on top of that green didn't it pop I, I really like this i'm glad i made this choice when i was designing the chipboards and finding images that i could use i was like what am i going to do and when i saw this one i was like ah i think this will be a good one i'll put a block on it just for a moment all right, so in this pocket, we're going to put our envelope that we made at the first. So in case you need a recap, we took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and I went from the outside and folded in to where these met in the middle. Then I did about an inch across and then about three inches up. So you've got a little bit of a gap here. And then brought this down then i cut a strip of cardstock used from the holiday quartet merry christmas this side i use a calco collage little santa use some pinking scissors to cut the outside edge use the postal cube cancellation stamp and then this is another cancellation and then this was part of the postmark collage i think it's right postmark postal postmark yeah i think so so that's going to go right here in our little pocket and then i stamped this earlier this was on some copper cardstock that i have and i used a punch it says this christmas we celebrate the gift of precious people in our lives people like you and i just thought that was kind of neat so you could say like that came in the envelope or something i don't know then we have this word search which is part of the a christmas dream subscription box we've been putting word searches in them for a while now and i like the pocket and then there's room to put other stuff in this pocket and then let's flip this over and this is where we use the little birdie on top of the gold i love it and then use the fabric and layer that on top of the gold embossing so you can see how beautiful that's going to be when you come to it in the journal well i hope you enjoyed this oh let me show you i did a prototype so this was using the spray stencil page same concept and then here was the mop-up side that did, didn't really turn out the way that i thought it would but i liked this marbled weird look and i just did the same techniques because i'm making two journals so i just did the same techniques here so i wanted to show you those Alrighty, everybody i hope you enjoyed this i hope it gives you some inspiration on trying some different layering techniques that doesn't really make your page too too thick the pocket here kind of adds some bulk but this doesn't add a whole lot of bulk to a page and neither do the chipboard pieces they're relatively thin but they're just enough texture on the page to make it special Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Come back on Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, y'all take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.